Whenever somebody drinks alcohol, the very first place that that alcohol is going to go is to the front part of their brain right here. It's what's called the frontal lobe. Now this front part of our brain is what totally separates us from animals. It separates us from dogs and horses and chickens and dolphins because we have what's called the frontal lobe part of our brain. Now for everybody that's watching this video right now, if you're under the age of about 21, 23, that front part of your brain isn't really even working yet, okay? So if you're 16, 17, 18, that front part of your brain hasn't even fully kicked on yet. For people that are over the age of 21, 23, that part of their brain is working, uh, it's pretty well connected, and then after 23, it's on. So let me give you an example, okay, to demonstrate that it's not working yet for somebody right around the age 16. Have you ever done anything crazy in your backyard? I'm sure you have, right? And somebody comes running out and they look at you and they holler, why did you do that, right? You look a little bit freaked out and you look back at them and what's your answer all the time? I don't know, all right? Well, that's because you actually don't know why you do certain things. Next time somebody hollers at you, why did you do that? Look back at them and holler, I don't know. But to stay from getting out of trouble or to get out of trouble, be sure to follow it up with, and science is on my side, okay? Because science has demonstrated or has shown that under the age of 21, you really don't know why you do what you do because that frontal lobe isn't fully connected. The way the human brain develops, it develops from the back to the front. So vision first, then muscle control, and then finally decision-making skills. That's the way that the brain develops. So the thing is, that frontal lobe part of your brain isn't even fully developed. When a youth, somebody under the age of 21, drinks alcohol, alcohol goes into their body, within 30 seconds, it makes its way to the brain and it starts to affect the front part of their brain. That front part of your brain does two different things. Like I said, it's called the frontal lobe. I'm gonna give you a question and I want you to come up with the answer in your head. Now the answer that you're gonna get is coming directly from your frontal brain, okay? Your frontal lobe. Here we go. The question is, cottage cheese ice cream, good or gross? Gross, right? Yeah, now let me ask you this. Did you need to taste cottage cheese ice cream to know it was gonna be gross? No. What your brain did is it took the flavor of cottage cheese and it took the flavor of ice cream, it put it together and it said gross. I don't like that. Frontal lobe. That's where the idea of the plane came from. That's where the idea of the cell phone came from. That's where the idea of solar panels come from. Because human beings are able to see stuff that isn't there and to make it happen, okay? Front part of our brain does two really important things. One of the things that it does is it helps us to predict the future. Dun, dun, dun. That's right, predict the future. We all have the ability to predict the future at times, okay? Here we go, not like lottery ticket numbers or stuff like that, but let me give you an example, okay? Let's say I'm wearing a uh, bathing suit and tennis shoes, okay? Don't picture that in your frontal lobe, but bathing suit and tennis shoes, that's all I have on. I'm standing on this really big hill. On the right side of me is a shopping cart. On the left side of me is uh, my best friend. And I look at my best friend and I say, hey, I want to ride down this hill as quickly as I possibly can in this shopping cart. My best friend's like, okay. So me and my tennis shoes and bathing suit, we get in this shopping cart. My best friend grabs his shopping cart and he goes, one, <laughs> two, <laughs> three. I'm sorry, it's my best friend. <laughs> More than likely, it's gonna be like, uno, <laughs> dos, tres. <sighs> and he pushes the shopping cart, all right? Now picture that in your frontal lobe. I am flying down this hill in tennis shoes and a bathing suit, in a shopping cart, and I'm going like 35 miles an hour. I got the wind blowing through the hair of my head, hair on my arms, <laughs> hair on my back, so I'm an old man now. And I am flying down this hill. <sighs> I'm going 35 miles an hour in this shopping cart, flying down this hill. I look up. When I look up, I have tears coming out of my eyes, 
okay? And when I open my eyes, I look and I see that there is a garbage truck parked in the bike lane. All right, get ready, frontal lobe answer. If I do not stop my shopping cart, I will crash, right, or die. What that was right there is you use the front part of your brain, frontal lobe, to predict the future in that situation, all right? Example number two. Uh, let's say you're walking home uh, from school or someplace. You have your backpack on. You uh, go into like one of those convenience stores and your friend kind of looks around and they tell you to steal a candy bar. Now, if you steal that candy bar, the front part of your brain is going to predict the future. More than likely, what's going to happen? Right. You're going to get in trouble. Let me give you another example. Let's say that... Um, Let's say two o'clock in the morning, you're laying in bed. Cell phone vibrates a little bit. You pick it up. It's your best friend. You just got a text. You're kind of sleepy and you look at it and it says, sneak out of your house. I'm in your driveway. You're like, yeah, cool. You go to the window and you're like, hi, I see you. Smiley face, ice cream cone, fox head, thumbs up, send, right? But you don't want to sneak out of your house. Okay. What's happening right there is the front part of your brain is telling you, man, you don't want to get in trouble. Okay. So the thing that's happening is that frontal lobe part of your brain is helping you to predict the future. Let me give you another real simple example. Okay. Let's say there's this big, huge dude. He weighs 320 pounds. He can bench press his own weight. So the dude's a giant muscle. Okay. Like me. Just kidding. And um, his head is completely shaved. He has tattoos all over his body. On the side of his head right here, he has the number 13 tattooed, all right? This dude's name, he's got his name tattooed on his chest and his name is Tito, okay? They call him little Tito 13 on the streets, okay? Little Tito 13 weighs 320 pounds and he can bench press his own weight so the dude's a giant muscle. You weigh like 97 pounds you break a little branch off a tree, sneak into the gym, but you take all the leaves off it, except for one leaf at the very end. You sneak into this gym. When little Tito 13 starts to work out with 320 pounds, you start to hit him on his bald head. Ding, 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 ding. Very first time you hit Tito, what's he gonna tell you to do? Right, stop. 23rd time you hit Tito, what's he gonna do, right? He's gonna show you a new way out of that gym, right? You're gonna walk out of that gym with a stick stuck in your neck. Hey, gracias Tito, right? Mom! But what you did right there is you predicted the future. Now for somebody under the age of 21, all it takes is one and a half to three beers within the course of an hour and you lose that ability to be able to predict the future. You lose the ability to be able to tell when things are gonna happen. There's a term called beer muscles. This is where people feel strong. This is where the small guy feels like he can pick the fight with a big guy. That's because that front part of his brain isn't working. You lose the ability to predict the future. Let's say you have a stoplight right here, okay? And you have a drunk driver. What happens is the light is yellow, then it changes red, but because he cannot predict the future and his brain can't process that information fast enough, he has a tendency to go through that stop sign and that's where accidents happen. I hear people all the time tell me, oh man, I'd rather be in a car where somebody's stoned than drunk. I'll tell you what, the research that's coming out now, here's what happens. You have a stop sign and you have people that smoke weed that stop way back here as opposed to where the light is. The other thing that they're finding out with marijuana is people who smoke weed have a tendency to stare at stuff for long periods of time, which isn't good when you're driving and you see something cute and shiny on the side of the road and you continue to stare at it. So the very first part of your brain that's gonna get affected when you drink alcohol is this front part right here called the frontal lobe that helps you with the ability to predict the future.